So if you don't know who David Dobrik is, he is a remarkably successful YouTuber on the platform, probably the greatest vlogger that we've ever seen on the platform. He's a guy that literally checks off each and every single box for a teenager watching content. He does cool things. He has an adorable smile. He comes off as really friendly, funny, outgoing, and in his vlogs, he does a lot of cool stuff. Now, a huge thing that David has to do in order to keep these vlogs entertaining is, one, he needs to surround himself with a good group of friends that would add entertainment value to the vlogs. Two, he actually has to make them entertaining via various activities that they do, and I guess pranks that he also performs. And believe me, the story gets extremely dark, but we're gonna start from fairly light and progressively go towards more and more dark. So David Dobrik's group of friends are referred to as the Vlog Squad. It includes people like Jason Nash, Seth Francois, Corinna, I believe Josh Peck was a part of it at some point. And to get an idea, if you're one of David's friends from the very beginning, this is a pretty nice situation to be in because David blew up off of these vlogs. You're gonna get a ton of exposure and clout as a result of being in these vlogs. As a matter of fact, if you go into his description and you click show more, you'd see a laundry list of Instagram accounts and other social pages for each and every member of the vlog squad in his YouTube videos. A bit of a toxic culture has formed as a result of this. Some vlog squad members may have felt pressure to do specific things that they typically wouldn't want to do as a result of being even associated with David Dobrik and being in the vlogs. This is a guy with 18 million YouTube subscribers, so I'm sure you guys can understand that being in his vlogs could really propel your career forward. So the very first issue came to light as a result of one former vlog squad member going on the H3H3 podcast and discussing a prank that David pulled on him that he wasn't necessarily very comfortable with doing. The guy's name is Seth, and about a month ago, he went on the podcast and explained that in a video where David set up with Jason Nash and Corinna, he told Seth that he was supposed to make out with Corinna and he was going to have Corinna in an old man mask so he wasn't really going to know who he was making out with but in reality Seth ended up making out with Jason. Seth claimed that he pretty much made out with somebody that he did not consent to making out with. As a result Scotty came out and addressed these allegations in a video and claimed that Seth had given his consent. David also shared an old text message that was shared between him and Seth that pretty much says yo bro I was thinking about it and I'm down for another kissing sketch. David says what do you mean and Seth says says, LOL, I don't really care as long as you clout me up. I'm not gay, I just do not care. Now this entire video results in a bunch of he said, she said, you know, Seth is claiming one thing, David's claiming another. I could see a potential scenario where Seth went behind the scenes and threatened David that if he didn't get X and Y, he may have taken this public because after all, this is leverage that Seth has over David. But I'll tell you something as a YouTuber that I even experienced myself on my other two channels. And I think this is probably my favorite part of this channel because I could be very real with you guys. YouTubers are incentivized to take things to specific extremes just to create entertainment value for you guys. A good example is on my NFL channel, there's currently a huge situation going on with Deshaun Watson. And on my NBA channel a couple months ago, there was a huge situation going on with James Harden. And I'm actually actively rooting for this drama because if there's drama, I have something to give to you guys. And if I have something to give to, give to you guys, it'll get more views. And if it gets more views, then I'll get paid. And that's just me being 100%. In David's situation, he's incentivized to create bizarre, funny situations that may put his friends in uncomfortable situations. And I'm not saying this is okay, because at the same time, with great power comes great responsibility. And there are definitely ways to create funny situations without putting your friends in uncomfortable scenarios. At the same exact time, I will go out to defend David in the sense that when you make as much content as he does, when your life revolves around creating these scenarios, it is very easy to get lost in the sauce because all you're thinking is, how do I create something that I could include in the vlog. And with the amount of vlogs that David posts, it was only a matter of time before he eventually had a slip up like this. And that doesn't necessarily make it okay, but at the same time, I don't like necessarily getting on the bandwagon of hating on the 19 million subscriber YouTuber. I do like humanizing each and every person in every situation and giving guys both of the scenarios so you can make the decision for yourself. At the same time, it is not okay to put your friends around you in these very uncomfortable situations where they have to do things that they don't want in order to advance their whole career. And David actually came out and said in an apology video today to Seth that I'm sorry to Seth, I just wanna make videos where everybody's in it, whether you're participating or watching, 
is enjoying and having a good time, and I miss the mark with that. Now, if you think the Seth situation was bizarre, it gets very, very dark over here, including, and I think at this point, this video is gonna get demonetized because this story is horrible. So Dobrik has a guy that used to be part of his squad called Dorde Dom. The story takes place in a 2018 vlog, and I'm gonna try to show you clips, but pretty much all of David's management has been scrubbing the internet to try to get any clips of this one vlog to be taken down. And if you wanna read the whole story, I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description down below. It's $1 to read the story, so I'm gonna just try to cover as much of it as I can in this video without exceeding a very long mark. The story takes place in 2018 when Dobrik was about to pass 10 million subscribers. A group of seven college students were on their way to meet David Dobrik, but a girl by the name of Hannah didn't know who David was. But her friends clearly did, and they really hyped up David because after all, he's an influencer with 10 million subscribers. Hannah's friends piled into one of their cars to go shoot a video with David Dobrik's vlog squad. Hannah knew that her friends watched the videos, but didn't really know how famous David was. Earlier in that day, some of Hannah's friends were chatting on Instagram with a vlog squad member named Dorde Dom. Dom said he wanted to hook up with them straight up, and some of Hannah's friends were even interested. So that night, Hannah would get into a a no holds barred, Hannah would get into one of those typical vlog squad parties that David would feature in his videos. Now, Dom's entire character was pretty much the guy who was a sex addict. And although David kind of has a reputation of his vlogs being somewhat fake and some providing situational comedy, some being improvised, the women in the vlog had no idea where Dom's character ended, meaning they didn't know if Dom was actually Dom off camera or if Dom was just like that all the time. The women weren't necessarily sure if they were actually going to sleep with Dom. And they even asked over the DMs whether any type of activity will be featured in the vlog. Hannah was a 20 year old sophomore at college at the time and didn't know what to expect, but, but this sounded like a fun adventure, so she was in. And by the way, Hannah is definitely accusing Dom of the R word that rhymes with vape. So here's the entire story and buckle down, this is where it gets really dark. Hannah gets into a situation where she is being force fed alcohol with by the vlog squad to the point where she doesn't know what the hell's going on. The vlog squad gave her the alcohol because she was too young to buy it herself and so were her friends. David actually filmed Hannah at the apartment and as she entered Dom's bedroom with him and he edited and uploaded the video as a threesome plot a few days later in a vlog called She Should Not Have Played With Fire. Had a threesome and I think we're all going to jail. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> Hannah requested that this video gets deleted and it was deleted, but it was viewed 5 million times. Dom appears in this vlog in two minutes and 13 seconds in and claimed that he invited all the girls over to have a fivesome. The next shot is Hannah and her friends walking into the apartment where David Dobrik, Dom, and a couple of other vlog squad members appeared. The moment she walked through the door, Hannah had a camera stuffed into her face. And as soon as she sits down at the couch, she claimed she said straight up that she had no idea who the vlog squad was. There was some banter between both sides, but one of the things that was said to her was, and this is a 45 year old, Jason Nash said something along the lines of, oh, you have a personality, hot girls like you usually do not. Hannah continues on to talk about how uncomfortable she felt because she was under the impression that she was just gonna meet some cool YouTubers that were going to hang out, maybe film something, but this seemed extremely high pressure for her. And unfortunately, the video isn't necessarily available to us, but Hannah and her friend Sarah told the insider that she never intended to have a fivesome with Dom that night. And according to the insider, you could tell through the voiceover that she's very hesitant to even engage in such a thing. But get this, at some point in the vlog, this is what David Dobrik said. After a couple minutes of talking, it was clear that no fivesome was happening. But by some stroke of luck in master negotiating, Dom had made progress. Hannah told the insider that she felt pressured by Dom and other vlog squad members into helping them create a video that objectified her. And this kind of ties into what I was telling you earlier, where David's incentivized to create these absurd moments where him and the vlog squad look like gods that are able to attract any woman and are able to party with women and have a good time. But what necessarily is going on in the surface of the vlog isn't necessarily what's going on behind the scenes. And that's what this article is telling us. And this is where it gets even worse. So eventually, 
Dom takes turns interacting with Hannah and her friends, and eventually he pulls her onto his lap at one point without even asking permission. And Hannah goes on to say that it was an environment where it felt like if she said no, it was not okay. It felt like from the moment we came there, there was an expectation that they were doing us a favor and we had to give them content. They were verbally like, why aren't you guys being fun? Do something sort of sexy, which is horrible. Have you guys ever seen that meme where there's a guy, a stick figure po poking a stick at something in the ground saying, do something? That's essentially what Hannah and her friends felt like. It gets even crazier. Dom eventually asks Hannah if she wanted to be his Instagram girlfriend and that she could make $10,000 a week and become famous if she agreed. But Hannah says that she declined and Dom briefly seemed to move on from her. As the night went on, things get even worse. Dom goes to Hannah and asks her if he can talk to her. Hannah agrees and said that Dom led her out of the room where her friends were in, down a hallway, and into a pitch black bedroom. Hannah says that Dom guided her in through the door and she quickly turned around and tried to get out of it, but Dom would block the exit with his body. Dom would then ask Hannah if they could hook up and Hannah said no. And Dom, would, Dom wouldn't relent. He asked, come on, can you at least give me a kiss? And Hannah said that she was getting really scared because he wasn't letting her leave. And my friends were in a completely different part of the house. So I was thinking, what happens if I keep saying no? So I just gave him a kiss. She eventually returned to where her friends were. And around that time, she said a couple of members of the vlog squad returned with a bottle of dark colored liquor. Trisha Paytas came out and said that she was there for 45 minutes that night and it was not a good situation. According to Trisha, the girls said, okay, we're here, but we don't want to sleep with anyone. We just want to have a good time and party with you guys. Paytas said that Jeff Wittick would then go to buy liquor for the party after she told Jason Nash, which was her boyfriend at the time, not to. Trisha Paytas and Jason Nash no longer are dating and she would frequently criticize David Dobrik and Nash on social media for what she claims is a pattern of behavior that exploits young women. Now, bear in mind, Hannah's friend Sarah didn't drink that night because she was driving, but Hannah said that after a specific point when they came back with the liquor, she couldn't remember much, just being really uncomfortable and being upset and angry that her friends thought that these guys were really cool when in reality they were just objectifying and gross. Eventually, Hannah drinks so much alcohol throughout the night that she blacks out and she wanted to go to Dom's room with her friend, Audrey. Sarah said that she could see that Hannah was drunk, but she was fine with letting her go because Hannah wouldn't be alone with Dom. Sarah would go on to say that alcohol was literally being nudged in Sarah's face and although there were times where she was just drinking it out of her own free will, there were also times where they were clearly trying to get her more drunk. Sarah would continue to say that Hannah was incoherent and was definitely really drunk at a specific point. And once Hannah and Audrey were in the room with Dom, Sarah said that other members of the vlog squad tried to listen in. Dom at some point locks the door at the bedroom while he was trying to sleep with her to stop the other vlog squad members from coming in. And Sarah said that David Dobrik was amongst the vlog squad members trying to look into the room. She shared a video of Dobrik that she took that night with the insider. And this is where it gets very disturbing. Sarah said that Dom and Audrey came out of the room first and that Sarah went in after to find Hannah Hannah lying limp on the bed. Hannah claims that she doesn't remember sleeping with Dom and that Audrey told her that Dom did perform acts on her that were penetrative. And according to Hannah, Audrey told her that Dom was trying to sleep with Hannah and didn't stop as Hannah showed signs of losing consciousness. So Audrey took over to get Dom to stop. In a text to Hannah, she says that I remember you were starting to close your eyes and you were just obviously drunk. So I finished him off just to get him away from you. The article continues to describe the trauma that Hannah felt as a result of this entire scenario. She struggled to process the footage in Dobrik's vlog, and Hannah really struggled to find closure as a result of the incident. One night in February of 2019, she sent a very long message to Dom requesting that the video comes down. The vlog came down, but Hannah explained that she still deals with the psychological effects of the night to this day. And when she drinks, she said she still experiences panic attacks sometimes. And if she's sleeping with a new partner after drinking, she said she sometimes starts crying uncontrollably. This is all really horrible. And even though David Dobrik apologized, this is something that clearly 
really damaged another human being. And the sad part is David Dobrik's management is probably going to clear his name. And in about six months from now, there's a good chance that people are not going to pay as much attention to the story as it deserves. So do me a favor and share this story. It doesn't even have to be my video. Share the Business Insider article, share screenshots, share anything. Because for the rest of her life, just so David Dobrik could get a good clickbait worthy story, this woman is scarred for life every time she drinks alcohol or every time she sleeps with a new partner.